Butyrate producing bacteria versus natto bacteria. Clearing up the confusion. That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiaki Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. This is the Q&A video. I'll be answering some of your comments. Please watch the video until the end. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, Longevity Bacteria Discovered in Japanese Centurion's Gut. And this is the Q&A video of this video. The actual title was, What is the Longevity Bacteria Discovered in Japanese Centurion's The Kyotango Study Explained? And thank you for watching this video because now it went over 49K views, almost 50,000 views. I'm so happy. Thank you very much for watching it. Plus, thank you very much for commenting to the video. I am sorry that I have not been able to answer all of your comments. But in this video, I'll be answering some of your questions. First of all, let me tell you a little about this video. So the video is about the Kyotango region in Kyoto Prefecture and a study called Kyotango Longevity Cohort Research. Kyotango is well known in Japan at the moment as a longevity hotspot because there are three times as many centenarians than the national average. And the researchers of this Kyotango longevity cohort study discovered that the senior citizens in the Kyotango region have high amount of butyrate producing bacteria that they call the longevity bacteria. So this bacteria seems to be the key to their healthy, long life. However, some of you are maybe confused with different terms. You know, we have butyrate producing bacteria, butyrate, natto bacteria, bacillus subtilis, natto kinase. Are they all the same? Are they different? If they are, how are they different? So I'll be answering all those questions. I'll be clarifying uh, those differences today. So it is going to be a little technical, but I will include some practical tips as well. So by watching this video, you will learn how to eat to increase butyrate producing bacteria so that you will expand your health span. So please watch the video until the end. Thank you. Now, so the first question is, the question then arises if it is the bacteria causing longevity or the butyrate they are producing. I would argue it is the latter as butyrate has too many health benefits to list, just such PubMed, and is suspected as the underlying chemical responsible for the health benefits of a high fiber diet. You can also take sodium butyrate in pill form. I use it as a sleep aid instead of melatonin as there is no dependency risk, right? Yeah. So butyrate producing bacteria produce butyrate and butyrate does all the jobs. So in essence, yeah, it is true that butyrate is critical. However, to have butyrate, you need butyrate producing bacteria. You can absorb butyrate from supplement too, but usually the amount contained in a supplement is relatively small compared to the amount that butyrate producing bacteria can produce in the gut. So the big difference between the two, you are absorbing butyrate from outside, but the butyrate producing bacteria produce butyrate in the gut. They do the fermentation process in the gut. That is the critical part of this production. Therefore, you need both butyrate and butyrate producing bacteria. So the second question, if I'm not mistaken, they talk about that bacteria, natto kinase. So that bacteria, I assume that the longevity bacteria, right? 
No, it is not natto kinase. It is butyrate producing bacteria. And natto kinase is not a bacteria. It is an enzyme in natto, which is different from natto bacteria. Now, the third question. Just discovered your channel, sugoi. I, I think he means sugoi, which means wonderful. My partner eats natto every day. I take natto kinase supplement. I wonder if supplement is better than the smell and stickiness of natto. Well, if you don't like the smell and the taste of natto, um, yeah, taking natto kinase supplement may be a good way to absorb natto kinase. However, as I say it now, natto kinase is different from natto bacteria. And it is different from natto because it's just a one, one part of natto. Therefore, you can gain the benefit of natto kinase from supplement. You are missing other health benefits of natto, right? So um, now natto has natto kinase, which is a great enzyme because it support your blood circulation. And blood circulation is one of the most important factors of your well-being. If you want to be healthy, you won't have good blood circulation. And natto kinase supports it. Therefore, it is significant enzyme. But natto has other health benefits, such as vitamin K2, which is great for your bone health. Yeah, bone health is another thing that you need uh, for healthy aging. And vitamin K2 helps the absorption of calcium. Therefore, if you absorb calcium, you want to absorb vitamin K2 uh, at the same time. So it kind of supports the process. It is great for the bone. And then spermidine. Spermidine is a polyamine that can activate autophagy. What is autophagy? Autophagy is a cellular recycling mechanism which is critical for slowing down aging. If you want to slow down aging, you need autophagy. You want to activate autophagy. And there are many ways to activate autophagy, such as exercise, but there are certain food you can eat to activate autophagy. And spermidine, Spermidine is one nutrient that can activate autophagy, and natto contains high amount of spermidine. Natto is one of the few foods that has the highest amount of spermidine. Natto and tempeh and few other food. Then, of course, protein. Natto is a protein powerhouse. As a plant-based protein source, natto is one of the highest. It is wonderful if you practice a plant-based diet. And even if you don't practice a plant-based diet, by adding some plant-based protein is critical to create balance in your absorption. You don't want to gain protein only from animal sources. The optimal way is having half and half, half from plant, half from animal. Yeah, combination of the two is critical. And natto is your savior when it comes to protein intake. Now, from here, you can tell how wonderful natto is because it supports heart health, bone health, and muscle health. Those three are the critical part of healthy aging. On top of that, on top of this, and this is the most important, factor of natto, and that is natto bacteria. The official name is Bacillus subtilis. The reason why I eat natto is because of Bacillus subtilis, not because of natto kinase. For me, Bacillus subtilis is more significant than anything else. And this is the bacteria which is playing a role in this butyrate producing bacteria business. Now, the next question is, so what is this bacteria? Yeah, again, many people seem to ask this question. I, I did say that in the video, it is a butyrate producing bacteria, but for some reason, people didn't get it. And some people answer the question and say, Bacillus tabacillus. And the other person from Nato. 
no, 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 no. They, they, they are not this bacteria. Um, and then the last person said, also found in spicy red Korean kimchi and the home brand of kombucha. Uh, I'm sorry, they're all wrong. Okay, so this bacteria, I say one more time, it's a butyrate producing bacteria. It is not Bacillus subtilis. Bacillus subtilis is a bacteria in natto. And uh, so bacteria found in spicy red Korean kimchi is lactic acid bacteria or bifidobacteria. They are not butyrate producing bacteria. And the whom brand of kombucha, well, I didn't know this product, but I checked. And then apparently it contains bacillus subtilis. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, but anyway, it is different. So the bacteria, the longevity bacteria is butyrate producing bacteria. It is not lactic acid bacteria. It's not bifidobacteria. It's not bacillus subtilis. However, all those bacteria are important. Bifidobacteria, lactic acid bacteria, and natto bacteria play significant roles here. And you know about bifidobacteria and lactic acid bacteria, right? A lot of food contain those two, such as yogurt, kimchi. I think both contains both bacteria and other pickles as well. And kaffir, kaffir uh, as well. However, natto bacteria is unique. I think natto is the only food that contains it. Well, I didn't know about this, uh, the other kombucha thing. Um, apparently, Maybe there are some other food that contain Vasilis subtilis. But anyway, you want Vasilis subtilis in this interplay because natto bacteria is called sacrifying bacteria. Sacrifying bacteria break down the ingested dietary fiber and oligosaccharides into sugars. And lactic acid bacteria use these sugars to produce lactic acid and bifidobacteria use those sugars to produce lactic acid and acetic acid. And using lactic acid, butyrate producing bacteria can also produce butyric acid or butyrate. I said butyric acid before, but I think the correct term is butyrate. Apparently, there is a slight difference between butyric acid and butyrate. In Japanese, both are called rakusan, it's the same word, but apparently they seem to be a different between the two. So I'll correct. I'm sorry, it should be butyrate. So the correct sentence should be, and using lactic acid, butyrate producing bacteria can also produce butyrate. Therefore, bifidobacteria, lactic acid bacteria, and natto bacteria all play a role here, and they all support the butyrate producing bacteria doing, doing their job. So, more technically, natto bacteria support bifidobacteria and lactic acid bacteria, and then they support butyrate producing bacteria. So they all help. And that is why you need to think holistically. When you think about supplement, you are kind of separating individual bacteria or individual nutrient, but the dynamic interplay is critical. When you have a diverse nutrient and diverse bacteria, they have a synergetic effect. They support one another. This is the interesting thing about how uh, things work in our gut, especially the fermentation process within our gut. And then, of course, you need to feed butyrate producing bacteria, and then highly fermentable dietary fiber is the one. So you want to eat food with highly fermentable dietary fiber. You also want to eat food with vitamin B1, vitamin D, and omega-3 fatty acid, DHA, and EPA. In other words, eat magoa yasashi koku, which means 
beans, nuts and seeds, seaweeds, vegetables, fish, mushrooms, tubers, whole grains, and fruit, plus fermented food, such as yogurt, kimchi, and natto. For details, please watch this video. The actual title is How to Increase the Longevity Bacteria Found in Japanese Centenarians. Now, another question. That is not the name of the bacteria. Uh, th that, I think, means the butyric protein bacteria. A research with Google gave me butyric acid producing bacteria are costrodium bacterium. Okay, I'm not going to read those are technical terms, right? Are they all longevity bacteria or is there a specific one? Okay, so uh, I suppose they are all butyric producing bacteria. The ones they discovered in the gut of the senior citizens in the Kyotango regions are Roseburia. Coprococcus and Lachnospira. They are all called butyrate producing bacteria and they produce butyrate. And then butyrate producing bacteria are in the spotlight in Japan at the moment. They don't usually talk about specific names. It doesn't seem to matter so much unless you want to get into the technical details. Um, if you're interested in the technical details, uh, please watch this video. It is called Characteristic of Physiological Function and Biological, De Biological Data of Kyotango Longevity Area in Japan. So Dr. Yuji Naito appears in this video. I'm sorry, this is the only one I found in English. Uh, so Dr. Naito has a lot of videos in Japanese, but this is the only one I found in English. So if you're interested, uh, please watch this one. But otherwise, please watch my videos because my video contains a lot of practical information. So what can you actually do? What can you eat? What can you do? On the, on the other hand, Dr. Naito's books and videos do not contain so much practical information, more kind of technical information about bacteria. But as far as like what to do or what not to do, he does not give details. I made those videos based on my other research as well. So if you want to know the practical way to increase butyrate producing bacteria, please watch this video. The actual title is How to Increase the Longevity Bacteria Found in Japanese Centurions Beyond Diet. So this video talks about other methods than diet. And then this one, uh, don't do this if you want to increase butyrate producing bacteria. So th this, this is a video about things not to do. Now I say diversity is the key but also how you eat is important. And one concept called Ichiju Sansai is critical. Uh, it means one soup and three side dishes. But the idea is to have small dishes. You have many dishes so that you can uh, have a diverse ingredient in your meal. It creates diversity. For details, please read the book. Okay, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiak Takamiya, the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel and please leave your comment. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Live with your Ikigai!